ever found yourself in the middle of a spelling lesson and you watch your students second guessing whether it's magic M-A-G-I-C or magic M-A-J-I-C? Or they're wondering why bicycle isn't spelled with a K? Well, buckle up because today we're diving headfirst into the quirky world of phonics. And I'm going to arm you with some super simple spelling rules that I learned as a Gen X teacher back when I was in school and I even taught to my own students over the past 25 years. Stay tuned. Educational rock stars, welcome back to another episode of One Classroom Over. My mission is simple to equip you with actionable tips, transformative stories, effective classroom systems, and expert insights for your K 5 classroom. I'm Farah, also known as the Center Fairy, your go to guide for all things for simplifying your teacher life. Each episode dives deep into key facets of the teaching experience from lesson planning and classroom management to student engagement and professional growth. If you're new here, make sure you hit that like and that follow button and click that bell so that you never miss out when I go live or drop a brand new video here on the channel. Today, we're diving into the topic of phonics rules. So whether you're sipping coffee at home or binge watching while you prep lessons, crank that volume up and get ready for a dose of inspiration and empowerment. Let's dive in. Spelling can often feel like a mysterious code for our little learners, a labyrinth of letters where one wrong turn can lead to massive confusion. What if I told you that you could give your students a master key, a key that unlocks patterns and transforms guesswork into aha moments? the key to understanding common phonics spelling rules. As we gather here in our virtual teacher's lounge, let's chat about how these rules aren't just arbitrary guidelines, but golden threads woven into the tapestry of our English language. They're the friendly signposts that guide our young readers and writers along their journey. Now, I've been teaching these rules for years. In fact, this Gen X teacher learned most of them when I was in school, and now I'm pulling them out of the vault to share them with you. They aren't new, but until recently, I hadn't seen them taught very often. These rules are not just rules for the sake of having rules. They're patterns that often predict how we use letters to spell words. We're gonna explore common questions that stump our students, like when to use K or C, or how a Y decides to sound like an E or an I. By the time we're done, you're gonna have a toolkit brimming with strategies, examples, and nuggets of knowledge to pass on to your students. So let's break down these common rules together. First, let's crack that code on K or C. We're gonna start at the beginning with the age old conundrum. Should it be a K or a C? You've probably experienced this. A student ponders why cat has a C, but kite has a K. This is where we unravel one of the most common phonic spelling rules. Typically, we're gonna use a C before vowels A, O, and U, as in cat, caught, and cut. K is used before I, E, or Y. When teaching the K, sound to my students, I will first teach them that both K and C can represent the K sound. Then I'm going to teach them that it's a K before E, I, or Y, and a C before A, O, and U, and any other consonant. Now let's look at the chameleon. Y, E, or I. Acting as both a consonant and a vowel, Y loves to play the role of long E and long I. In single syllable words where Y is the only vowel, it often takes on the sound of long I. Think fly and try. Now when it flutters to the end of a multi-syllable word, it's time for the long E to shine, such as happy or candy. But let's not forget about it in the middle of a word or in a closed syllable. It can change into a short I sound as well. Next up is the jolly J sound. D-G-E or G-E. When it comes to spelling the J sound at the end of a word, our young scholars might wobble between D-G-E and G-E. But here's a fun trick. If the J sound follows a short vowel, it's often spelled with D-G-E, as in badge or bridge. If a long vowel or a consonant comes before the J sound, G-E takes the stage as in rage or change. It's crucial to note that the J sound most often will never be spelled with a J at the end of the word. And when it's at the beginning of a word, we've gotta think about those soft sound of G 
rules, and we're going to discuss those here in a minute. Now, double trouble, the doubling rule before a suffix. Let's double down on this doubling rule. If a one-syllable word ends with one vowel followed by one consonant, you're going to double the final consonant before adding a suffix that begins with a vowel. Think of run, sprinting ahead to become running. When a word ends with a consonant preceded by two vowels or another consonant, the last letter remains a singleton, as in need becoming needed, or fall becoming falling. I like to teach my students a little chant. One, two, double I do, one, two, three, no doubling for me. Essentially, a student will look at the base word starting at the vowel and count. Using our chant, run would be one, two, double I do, with one on the U and two on the N. The word need would be one, two, three, no doubling for me, because counting from the first vowel, there are three letters before we add the suffix. The cliffhanger, to drop or not to drop. Adding suffixes can be quite the cliffhanger for your little spellers. Do we need to keep the letter or do we drop it? Here's a little rule. If the base word ends with a silent E, we drop the E before adding the suffix that begins with a vowel. For example, bake slips into baking without that silent E. However, if the suffix begins with a consonant, that silent E hangs on for dear life. Rare becomes rarely or nice becomes nicely. Hard and soft C. Now, coming back to the k sound from earlier, letter C wears two hats in the phonics rule. The hard C sounds like a k and is clear cut when it comes before A, O, and U, or any other consonant, such as cat or crunch. Now, that C softens up a bit before I, E, or Y, creating a hissing s sound, as in cereal or cycle. Recognizing the vowel that follows C helps decipher its secret identity. Now, hard and soft G follows a similar rule. Just like its buddy C, the letter G has a dual identity. G is hard, g, before an A, O, or U, or a consonant sounding like gate or goblin. Yet it softens before an I, E, or Y, taking on a J sound, such as gem or gem. Teaching students about the disguise that G takes on clarifies so many mysteries. Whether it's a G or C, it's important to teach your students that the vowels I, E, or Y are the triggers that change it to a hard or soft sound. Whether it's G or C, it's important to teach your students that it's the vowels I, E, or Y that are the triggers that change from hard to soft sounds. The dual, CK or K. When it comes to that final punch of the k sound at the end of a short one syllable word, after a single vowel, CK steps into the ring, such as duck and kick. However, K tends to follow a vowel team, like in peak or book or a consonant, such as milk. When using this rule for reading and decoding, I like to teach my students that CK says k and the vowel before the CK k is always short. TCH or CH? Now, this choice is much like picking the CK or K. If you hear a CH sound right after a short vowel in a one syllable word, it's usually TCH, and that's your best bet, like catch or hatch. Otherwise, CH is chosen to play, especially after a long vowel or a consonant or a vowel team, such as school or beach. In reading and decoding, I teach my students that CH says CH, TCH says CH, and the vowel before the TCH CH is always short. Y's departure. Adding suffixes to words ending in Y. When Y waves goodbye at the end of a word before a suffix, it often transforms into an I, unless that suffix begins with an I. Hurry becomes hurried, but keep the Y around when adding I and G to make hurrying. A simple little chant I use is Y flies and changes to I when there's a consonant before the Y. But when ing is around, Y stays on the ground. Seeing double, F, L, S, or Z at the end of a word. Lastly, our seeing double rule. Many a teacher has picked up a piece of student writing to see the word floss, ball, fluff, or buzz spelled without one of the consonants on the end. 
To help students when spelling these words, I teach them that if it is a one syllable word with a short vowel, they must double the final consonant. However, this one can be tricky and there are a few words that don't follow the rule, such as gal, pal, yes, bus, and a few others. I simply make a list of rule breaker words and students use that to reference on an anchor chart. All right, that's a rundown of some of the most handy common phonics rules that I learned as a Gen X teacher when I was in school, I know it was like back in the dinosaur days, that you can keep in your back pocket. Think of them as those trusty classroom supplies you can't live without. They just make everything run smoother. Keep these rules handy, weave them into your lessons, and watch your students start piecing together the spelling puzzle with a bit more confidence. The next time a student asks you why kitchen has a TCH, you'll have the answers to turn their puzzled frowns upside down. Ready to send your students on an unforgettable journey through the land of letters and sounds? Our Phonics for All Phonics Intervention Bundle is your ultimate ally in the quest to conquer your students' phonics challenges. Here's why the Phonics for All Bundle is a game changer. First, real life images. Say goodbye to those puzzled looks that clip art sometimes brings. With real images, even your ELLs will connect words to the world around them in a snap, making learning authentic and relatable. Two, comprehensive coverage. 14 meticulously designed units that take your students from the basics of short vowels all the way to the complexities of final blends. Three, standard aligned. Whether you're aligning with the Common Core State Standards or TEKS, this bundle speaks your language. Standards are clearly listed, making planning, crosswalking, and tracking progress a breeze. Next, engaging activities. Who said learning can't be fun? With games and activities peppered throughout, your students will be learning without even realizing it. They'll be too busy playing their way to phonics mastery. So why wait? Check the links in the description and the show notes to grab your Phonics for All Phonics Intervention Bundle today and watch your students transform into confident readers and spellers. Now, if you're looking for more tips, strategies, and simple systems to take into your classroom to make your teacher life a little easier, check out the other videos on your screen. Thanks for watching and keep being an educational rock star.